First, it was sneakers and perfume. Now, Donald Trump's latest venture is a God Bless the USA Bible, priced at $59.99, plus tax and shipping. According to the website, it is the only Bible endorsed by Trump who says he wants to make America pray again. But skeptics will remember when he was asked his favorite Bible verse. The Bible means a lot to me, but I don't want to get into specifics. Even to cite a verse that no, you like? No, I don't want to do that. Are you I mean, an Old Testament guy or a New Testament guy? Uh, probably equal. Two Corinthians, right? Two Corinthians, 317. That's the whole ball game. Of course, it's Second Corinthians. Trump also carried a Bible as he had peaceful protesters forcibly removed away from a church. Christianity has become a centerpiece of his re-election campaign, and this endorsed Bible that he's now selling mixes scripture with the law of the land. This Bible is the King James Version and also includes our founding father documents, yes, the Constitution. So is there irony or reason for concern over Trump hawking a Bible that includes the Constitution, given that the opening lines of the First Amendment prohibit the government from creating an official religion or favoring one religion. Joining us now, Bradley Onishi, host of the Straight White American Jesus podcast and MSNBC contributor and columnist Charlie Sykes. Dasha Burns is here with me on set. Charlie, do you see any irony or concern about Trump selling the Bible? Well, I see the irony of Donald Trump uh, grifting by selling the Bible during Holy Week, a, a book that he's obviously never read. And my guess is that uh, he wouldn't recognize the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, but the other irony, of course, is that here is Donald Trump, the great defender of Christianity, who is peddling his $60 Bibles while he is getting ready to go um, in front of a, of a court to face criminal charges for having sex with a porn star who we then had to pay off. So once again, we have irony on irony that anyone would think that Donald Trump is somehow the, the, the King David of our times. Well, Bradley, the website says, as I said, this is the only Bible endorsed by Donald Trump, who just days ago again compared his own challenges to those of Jesus Christ. He's been known to autograph a copy of the Bible. Does any of that cross any line for evangelical Christian voters? Well, I think there's a couple takeaways here. There are folks who are going to eat this up. Uh, Trump is clearly appealing to white evangelicals. Uh, as many people know, white evangelicals voted for Trump uh, in large numbers in 2016 and 2020. He needs every one of those votes in 2024 to return to the White House. So he's appealing to a specific base, and some of them will see this as somebody merging their faith with uh, patriotic elements like the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Now, there are others, including evangelicals and other, other Christians, who will see this as nothing short of blasphemous. Uh, when I was in Sunday school as a kid, I was taught that the Word of God was something that Christians needed to obey and humble themselves before. The idea that a former president would say that this is the only Bible endorsed by me is the greatest idolatry I think one can, can, can conjure, especially as uh, we approach Easter in a few days. Yeah, as a matter of fact, in the Q&A on the website, that is the first question. Is this the only Bible endorsed by uh, Donald Trump? So, Dasha, what do we know, if we're going to look at this in the bigger picture, about uh, Trump's push, both with evangelical Christians, but also numbers of his supporters who believe in Christian nationalism? Well, this is what's interesting, Chris, because in the primary, he made a big push with evangelical voters. He very much leaned into this idea that Christians and Catholics, that uh, religious folks are under attack by the woke left mob, right? Uh, but evangelical voters are in his base. These are people that have remained loyal to him through, uh, you talked about cross lines, like a number of lines have been crossed if you are a traditionally religious person, but they have stuck with him because of all of what he's touted that he's done for them. He made uh, the Supreme Court a conservative majority. He uh, frequently tells that he overturned Roe versus Wade. But what's fascinating is 
this is a general election now. So it's curious that he's leaning into the evangelical vote now, and they seem to have been behind him. Uh, one interesting piece of reporting came from our colleagues over at Telemundo who uh, talked about the evangelical vote in the Hispanic community and how there are leaders in those communities that are trying to get out the vote in record numbers there. So it could be a play to the religious Latino vote. We also know that he has a number of organizations supporting him, like the Center for Renewing America. Um, his former director of the Office of Management and Budget, uh, Russ Vaught, is the head of that organization. He's been very Who much some pushing. people think would be his chief of staff in a new administration. There's been a lot of speculation about his role. He he is known to speak with Trump fairly frequently, and he has been pushing for sort of Christian nationalist values, bringing those back into the fold in terms of policy. So uh, a lot of pressure from the religious right. The question is, you know, in a general election, why, why, why lean into that so much when those voters he seems to have on lock? So, Bradley, the Bible sales were great fodder for late night. Um, got a lot of laughs out of that. Liz Cheney posted on X, Donald, instead of selling Bibles, you should probably buy one and read it, including Exodus 2014. She's referring to the verse that says, thou shalt not commit adultery. I wonder if you can add a little more to, to, to um, what Dasha was just saying and, and yourself. Being brought up in the Christian tradition did not mean putting aside the Constitution, did not mean a Christian nation that excluded other religions, did not mean adopting the Constitution as part of Bible teaching. So if we're talking about white evangelicals, we're talking about the group in the in the country who scores the highest as Christian nationalists. Two-thirds of white evangelicals score as Christian nationalists. And to Dasha's point, a large number of Hispanic Protestants also score highly on Christian nationalist surveys. What does that mean? It means that when they're asked, should the federal government declare this a Christian nation, many of them say yes. When asked, does being a Christian play an important role in being a real American, many of them answer Yes. So when we talk about Christian nationalism, we're not talking about people simply saying, well, I'm a Christian and I'm a patriot. I'm a Christian and I love America. We're talking about folks who are talking about imposing a certain vision of Christianity on the rest of us in our public square. And so when we think about a former president selling Bibles that he's endorsed, uh, it sends a message to the 25 or 30 percent of folks in the country who identify as non-religious. It sends a message to those who are of other faiths saying, you're a second-class citizen. You're, you're something less than a real American. I will also say this is a moment that I think will give pause to many Christians of all stripes. Uh, we've been down this road before. When will uh, evangelicals, conservative Christians, conservative Catholics abandon Trump? But this is something that was proposed first in 2021 and then abandoned. Trump has uh, brought it back uh, here uh, in 2024. But this was not something that evangelical leaders were fond of a couple of years ago. And I think the jury's out about whether uh, they'll be fond of it now. So let's talk a little bit, if we can, Charlie, about ethics. Um, the Trump Bible website says this is not political. It has nothing mm -hmm. to do with any political campaign. Uh, having said that, if you read the fine print, what it doesn't say is that money from this could go to, say, fund payments to lawyers for any of his myriad court cases. Also, his 2023 financial disclosure shows he made more than $5 million speaking uh, through CIC Ventures, which is what this Bible is licensed through. So talk about the financial aspect of this, Charlie. Well, I mean, first of all, all these other concerns about uh, the Christian nationalism are completely um, legitimate. But 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 I do think that what really stands out here is the the overt grift, which is so consistent with everything else that Donald Trump does. You know, the Alpha and the Omega is can he make money off of that? Um, he could have given away these Bibles uh, during Holy Week. He said we should make America pray again. So here is my gift to my supporters. Instead that he and said he is marketing them. Um, he is trying to get more money out of his supporters. And so I, I, I do think that this is a legitimate question. Is he actually going to sell Bibles and use the proceeds to defend himself 
um, against the hush money for a porn star case? Is he going to peddle this uh, God bless the USA Bible with the Constitution and use it to defend himself against charges that, in fact, he undermined and violated the Constitution? So, I, again, uh, it, it's, it, it seems that I mean, Donald Trump is not only incapable of separating church from state, but also his incredibly relentless need for cash from his political agenda. And I mean, this is, again, I don't know whether this is a breaking point. I think that's highly unlikely. It's just the crudity of the grift, you know, basically going on the air like a, like a, like a low rent televangelist hawking an overpriced Bible that, and then using it to pay off his, his lawyers. I mean, there's got to be a certain subset of evangelical Christians who are going to cringe at that. Charlie Sykes, uh, Bradley Onishi, and Dasha Burns, thank you all. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on Get or the Cloud icon and enjoy it.